Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. I wanted to talk a little bit today about the merging or where we see DeFi, decentralized finance, working together with traditional finance. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to talk about that real quickly is because we have seen this happening more and more and more. We see things like real world assets being used as collateral on chain. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that, um, partially because you, what, what you hear a lot of times is the, the hardcore DeFi people not wanting anything to do with banks or traditional finance, traditional insurance or anything like that. And, and wanting everything to be algorithmic and wanting everything to be protocols. And what we're seeing is, is and what we're seeing and what we know is we don't feel, and again, this is kind of an opinion, but we don't feel that that's really possible. We're still going to have to utilize some of the structure that's already been built. And that doesn't always mean utilizing those, uh, all of those rails and all those pipes that have already been built in traditional finance, but some of the structure, some of the trust and all that, that and, and some of the processes that have already been built and then just adapt what we have in decentralized finance to expand, to expand the capital pools, to expand the participation and opportunities. So before we get started, please don't forget, uh, subscribe, visit us on Twitter at Interaxis8, ask us questions if you want, uh, check out what we're doing in, in terms of our blogs uh, on our website, interaxis.io. So. Uh, DeFi and traditional finance. One of the uh, items that we saw in the last few weeks that is really exciting is Societe Generale, which I will uh, not bore you with my horrible uh, French accent, but we'll, we'll call it SocGen, which is a third largest bank in France, a, a major bank, uh, which is really pushing forward into blockchain, really pushing forward into DeFi and crypto. Uh, they have a, they've launched um, an, an entity called Forge, which is what they're using to do this. They want to enable some more uh, real-time settlements. Um, they want to, you know, give their give access for their users, for their clients, for their investors, for their depositors more uh, more access to DeFi type um, uh, tokens, DeFi type abilities, uh, and it's really interesting what they're doing. So one thing that they've done recently, which I really wanted to highlight to show how traditional finance and DeFi are going to work together, is SockGen and, and Forge. What they did was they uh, went in and, and took about $40 million worth of bonds, or, or sorry, $40, $40 million worth of loans. Okay, so these are home refinance loans. So they, they, uh, refin they help people refinance their homes or get home loans or, or HELOCs, uh, home equity lines of credit. And they package those up into a security, which is basically a bond. So they package those up into a bond. Now, many of us from the financial crisis remember this is what, what happens. You take mortgages, you take a whole bunch of mortgages, take you know hundreds or thousands of mortgages together, you package those up and you sell those as one investment, one security, one bond. And so what the investor is doing is basically buying income streams, saying I will pay uh, X amount now to get Y income stream over a certain period of years and based on the credit worthiness of all of those mortgagees of all those people who are borrowing money their ability to continue to replay to repay plus the collateral which is the actual home that's where the investors have decided this is a good place a good relatively safe place to put money um, and that that will happen so long as the lender in this case SockGen, so long as they have really done their homework and they have verified that this particular borrower is a good credit risk, that they will continue to repay, that their home is worth what they think it's actually worth, that the collateral is good, that they can actually collect on the collateral if they need to. So basically what they did is they packaged these loans into a security called a bond. Now what they did differently this time is they turned this into a token. So now this is a... Uh, uh, a token that they have basically transferred over to their uh, subsidiary called Forge. So Forge now has this token and what Forge is going to do with this token, which is again worth about $40 million, is they are going to, or they've, they've asked the MakerDAO, they've asked MakerDAO, can we use this token as collateral and borrow die? So we want to put this token into MakerDAO and we want to get back DAI. 
and we're going to use this token as collateral. Now this is a big deal because we, we have already seen in the past where we, we've some real world assets have been utilized as collateral on MakerDAO or Aave or, or it's been proposed and we've seen it more in terms of a new kind of crypto company, uh, 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 Centrifuge did this with Tinlake, where it, it's kind of a new company that's, that's raised funds, some sort of offering, tokenized it and then taken it to MakerDAO. This is kind of the first time that I've seen that we that a bank has gone to do this. So again, $40 million security, they've turned it into tokens, they've, they're, they're proposing to offer that up as collateral to borrow DAI, and they want to borrow 20 million DAI. So they have a $40 million, uh, $40 million worth of tokens, 20 million DAI that they're getting back. Now this is going to go from Forge back to SockGen, the $20 million, of, of course this $20 million of DAI will be turned into US dollars and go back to SockGen. So what SockGen is doing is they're basically saying we're going to take this, these $40 million of home refinancing, package them up, uh, and in the past what they might have done is they might have gone and sold it to another bank or sold it to an insurance company or some you know bigger investors. But what they're doing here is they're saying we're going to go straight to MakerDAO and we're going to borrow DAI. Now what does that mean? Why would they do that? And why is it actually exciting for those of us in DeFi? Because usually we see a bank coming and, and the, you know, a, a lot of people in DeFi go run and they go, oh my gosh, they're, they're going to ruin everything. But in reality what they're doing is all they're saying is now, if I have, if I'm a, uh, a part of MakerDAO, if I've uh, borrowed or if I've uh, provided collateral or if I've provided uh, liquidity for MakerDAO, now essentially I am becoming an investor in this. They're using my liquidity that I've provided in addition to all the other billions that have been provided in the MakerDAO, they're using that instead of going from bank to bank to bank, which remember, banks reselling securities like this to each other that they might not have, have looked at, you know, going, uh, checking out the credit worthiness and of course getting the, the ratings agencies to give them all AAA ratings or the, or the highest ratings and then selling them to each other, repackage them and selling them again, that's what caused the financial crisis. Now, when we go here, we are going to, one, have so much more transparency. We are going to be able to look inside more of this because it's on chain. Okay, you're going to have a DAO that's going to be looking at this, and this DAO is responsible for keeping DAI relatively stable at a dollar, remember. So they're really going to be looking at what is inside these tokens, what is inside the, these particular mortgages. So we're not going to have this black box of, of these types of securities being traded over and over. On top of that, it opens up the opportunity for me to essentially be a liquidity provider. When this happens, when you start having billions to trillions of dollars where banks are taking real estate and other uh, lending, uh, other loans that they've made, packaging them up and then finding liquidity through DeFi, what that does is it means I can then be a liquidity provider here and I am essentially helping SockGen. Now why would I want to help a bank? Because I don't care. I don't care who I'm helping. All I know is I'm providing liquidity and if I trust MakerDAO, if I trust the DAO members to have looked into this and voted, then this is going to open up so many more opportunities because before this relationship was only the purview of bank to bank. It was only the purview of institution to institution. And now we are opening up opportunity. What it also means is banks like SockGen are going to have new uh, liquidity opportunities. They're going to be able to participate. They're going to be able to get participation from different liquidity and capital pools all over the world that have been funded by individuals, by people just connecting wallets and being able to provide liquidity. That's where this die came from, right? This is others being able to provide liquidity. And now this die will go to Forge, which will go to SockGen, which is 20 more million dollars that they can go do something else with. Okay, and, and these loans, these are, you know, I think five-year loans are going to come due in, in five years, 0% interest, whatever it might be. But at that point, they can unwind this and the, you know, the, the, the loans or the tokens or, or sorry, the um, the securities can go back to SockGen, but this is tremendously interesting and very important. Now keep in mind SockGen is doing this not as a 
a gimmick, as, as some companies will, you know, say issue NFTs or or pseudo participate in DeFi or give you a little bit of Bitcoin if you do something. This is not a gimmick. They are actually going through this process to figure out from a regulatory perspective, accounting perspective, liquidity perspective, what they're able to do and set up the process to be able to do this over and over again. This is really interesting and exciting because again, now you have opportunities for others to participate here and have that go into the, the major banking and the major financial system. And at the end, remember SockGen, part of this is they have to actually meet the people that are going to be borrowing for their home. They have to look at the, at the value of the home and they have to make sure that that's all acceptable. You're always going to have to have some human interaction, people dealing with people. And they basically said, we're already good at that. We already have that taken care of. Now what we're going to do is, is we are going to access the DeFi uh, capital pools because we haven't been able to access that before. We have access to all these other banks. We want to access DeFi capital pools because DeFi capital pools means that now we can get you know, anyone who wants to contribute, you know, a thousand dollars into to MakerDAO is now being able to participate in this. They're opening participation. And the more and more this happens, whether it's with Maker or with Aave or with Compound or, or, or Fuse or any one of the other uh, um, lending protocols, lending pools that's going on, this is going to open more and more investment opportunities for everybody around the world that wants to participate that hasn't been able to participate in something like this. All these investment opportunities are going to open up because they're going to be able to connect a wallet, contribute to protocols like Maker and Aave and Compound and, and Fuse and such, and, and therefore there's going to be so much more opportunity, so much more yield, so many more chances to be able to do that because when banks who, who have solved kind of that last mile problem already of being able to underwrite when they are going to you basically use DeFi to refinance themselves, that is going to open up so many more opportunities worldwide. So I want to talk a little bit about that because it's really exciting. We're going to do a few more videos on the merging of traditional finance and DeFi because there's so much of that going on right now. It's really exciting. It also goes along with what we're doing with DAOs. It goes along with what we're doing with insurance. And it's really exciting to, to see that kind of happening now because now, especially in this term, uh, one of the things to note is the collateral that's here on MakerDAO for right now has always been cryptocurrency. It's always been ETH or some ERC20 uh, tokens or some sort of cryptocurrency. When it starts to be real world assets, real mortgages, real securities backed by a, a bank, now you have a little bit more stability here because otherwise it is all um, it actually kind of a crypto house of cards, right? Because if, if the value of ETH falls precipitously, as we saw, the, the value of DAI could change significantly and it could bring all of this down. But in this way, some of the value, that we're, we're kind of putting a floor on it because as long as home prices stay relatively stable and as long as people keep paying these mortgages, we're going to provide a, a floor and, and it's basically going to allow some of these protocols to have a better allocation, to, to ha have actually non-correlated assets within their own protocol, within their liquidity and capital pools, which is what they really should be having. We don't want this all to be cryptocurrency in here. We don't want it all to be subject to the volatility and fluctuations of, of the crypto market. We want some of this to actually be real world assets, to be real payments, to be real loans, to be real securities, because that's going to provide somewhat of a floor. It's going to actually make for better overall allocation and better security and safety. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Again, we'll be talking more and more about the merging and melding of traditional finance and DeFi coming up. Hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to subscribe. Visit us on Twitter at Interaxis8, and we'll see you in the next video.